Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Paratalk. And on this episode, I am once again joined by Tom, Mr. Shrouded Hand, because it is Halloween. Well, nearly Halloween. So, without further ado, let me bring Tom in and uh, let's get this extra spooky episode on the road. Hello, Tom. Hello. How are you, mate? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Love this time of year, so I'm happy. We are here once again on the oh, eve yeah. of Halloween. <laughs> what have you been up to? Uh, well, I've been uh, working hard, working, making some videos, been streaming some Silent Hill 2 remake. Do you know what? For a moment, I thought you said that you'd been working out. And I thought, no, I was no, imagining no. you on this big like, bench press, getting like no. in massive Hulk man. No, God, no. So you've been I playing... Wouldn't know, I wouldn't know how to. If I went to a gym, I, I don't think I'd know how to use the equipment. <laughs> I'd be one of them people you see on the videos. You know when they film people in Doing gyms, Insta. Using the equipment. Doing the Insta. It'd be doing yeah, like they like make fun of them. <laughs> I'd be that person, I think. Got your, uh, got your, um, got your, like, your, your yoga pants on and your little bum bag. And you're doing your Insta yeah. to your like yeah. to your shrouded hand channel, like. <laughs> uh, anyway, so what I was going to say was, um, it's because it's Halloween, and we've we have returned once again to um, another episode of just mindless, really waffle. I thought it would be interesting to firstly find out: Do you have any plans for Halloween? Um, no, you know what, I'm doing a, I'm doing a live stream on the uh, Proper Horror Show's channel, so, go. uh, yeah, that's, that's my plans, he's got some, do, do you know, the, do you know the quiz show, uh, Only Connect? Um, no, I don't, well, no, no, please, oh, please inform it's me. Good. Well, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a BBC quiz show, she's doing, like, a, a horror-themed version of that, I think, it's like, a, I don't know, you get, you get, like, um, four words, that seemingly have no link to, and then you have to find what connects them, and then come up with the answer. It's seen. It's it's one of those quizzes which is like super brainy people go on it. So I'm hoping her version is for like thick people like me. So <laughs> we'll see. That's I my plan for Halloween. I used to do. Uh, I used to. Do, my mate was into like pub quizzes back mm. back when I was a young man. We used to do uh, like pub quizzes were a thing. And it was a new thing, and my mate was really into it. And he, he used to say to me, "Come down the pub, come down the pub, Reeves. I'll buy you a drink, I'll be part of the team, and we're going to do a pub quiz, and we're going to beat, and we're going to get the cup and put it on the wall and stuff." And mm -hmm. I went one time, and all of the questions, the guy that was doing the questioning, he picked such random questions uh, that I, how are you meant to know that? It's like. What was the famous goat of um, so and so in Albania in 1982? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, how, do you, how am I meant to know that? You know, just ask me a question like, you know, what was the singer in Blondie called or something? You know, ask me some basic. Yeah. But it was like really intellectual stuff. It was really kind of like out there questions. And I did, I did feel rather, um, uh, rather sort of a little bit stupid in a way. Um, not because. Yeah, I just felt weird. It was like I don't know. You've got to you've got to find the right balance with a yeah. pub quiz. I, I'm quite a fan of the pub quiz, and some of them I've been to are, are like that. They're so the questions I find so hard, yeah. and it's like it's not it's not fun because you you just I don't know. You just don't know anything. And then there's like the other side of it. I've been to pub quizzes that are so easy. It's like everyone just gets 100 percent, and they get they come to the end and they read out like what teams have got what and like everyone's got either like 100 out of 100 or like 98 there'll be like one random question that you don't know and it's just like that's no fun either because it's just like there's no challenge to it you, you've got to find one that's right in the middle i think i found one there's one there's one by me that's, that's kind of like that and I, I'm, i've started to enjoy going to that one but yeah i've been I've been to quite a few different pub quizzes, and there's there's a balance to be struck there. I've got a um, brilliant idea for a paranormal pub quiz, and what yeah. you do is you get two teams of people um, in the pub, and it's all all the questions are paranormal, so they've all got to be ghostified or whatever, unexplained or mm. supernatural. But you can't not you can't answer as a team. 
nobody gets asked the question directly. The way it works is yeah. each team member, like group, has got a table. And on that table is a Ouija board. Uh, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they get asked the question and then the Ouija board has got to spell it out. The answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. How long would that take? How many questions would you get How would done? you enforce it, though? That's the thing. You'd have to have someone standing over every table making sure they went yeah. getting the answers from the, you'd, from you'd the need Ouija a, board. You'd need a special planchette with a with a with um, with some sort of anti-cheat device built into it. Yeah. And then you'd know that they're not, they're not just randomly going, yeah, I know how to spell that. You could have, like, you could have different rounds. You could have, like, the Ouija board round and then yeah. the automatic writing round. And then, like the the uh, ghost box round, or a round where you've got to record EVPs and got your get your answers from there. Yeah, that could be good. That I am um, talking about ghost boxes, as you do. Uh, I um I I was watching somebody the other day with a, a a guy. He said, "I'm going to get the ghost box out now," and he got this radio, like his little radio out, and it's basically a um, with his the broken scanner, and it was just going up 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 up, up. Mm. and um. I just don't, I can't get my head around those. I just like, you're hearing, you hear words like uh, sausage, uh, chicken, uh, uh, there you go. Yeah. Ch- chicken that it died of eating a sausage. Uh, you know, you, I, I'm just very, I'm very skeptical when it comes to those devices. I don't know why. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the same, pretty much of any of those like ghost hunting gimmicky devices. I just find like, every time I'm watching a ghost hunting show, they've got so many things going off. I always think, Surely you'd see, you'd catch more, or you'd have a better experience if you just sat there quietly, just absorbing the atmosphere, seeing what you can hear and see with your eyes and ears. But it, they've just got like a million gadgets. They've got the ghost box things scanning through the through the radio. They've got these like motion sensor things that seem to just go off randomly. You know, a gust of wind hits it and it'll go off, and they'll think that's a ghost. And um, these like laser things that shine on the walls. I'm, I'm sure some of them are good, but I always just think, what happens to just the art of just sitting and doing like a vigil with your own body? No, 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 uh, no gadgets or anything. I mean, I do like watching go- these ghost hunting shows with yeah. things like that, but I just think sometimes, and I'm talking more about the ones that are. So there's quite a few on Amazon Prime that seem to be shoved on there, and they they kind of. I don't know. They they seem a bit like they seem a bit thrown together, and they just seem to every every show just seems to have like a million gadgets all going off, and it's just like I saw one where they had these like motion detecting robots that ran along the grounds, and they were like little kids' toys, and they just have like a room. They'd have all these like toys running around, like these little robots roaming around all over the floor, and it just mm. seemed a bit daft to me. Yeah, I, I do think the more. The more technical stuff, the more gadgetry you introduce, the more chance there is for false positives. And you can yeah. you can have um, very simple devices like you know electronic thermometers, um, motion detectors, which are simply just a light that goes off if something breaks a beam. But I think yeah. a lot of it's getting very sort of over technical now, and you 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 rely on it. You you don't you know. Uh, if you look at the the old you know the old ghost hunters, they maybe had um, a, a thermometer, um, a, a cassette recorder, and a and a pot of talcum powder, and that was it. And it it, it was like they they put the talcum powder in front of all the you know the doorways or whatever. They put their cassette recorder going, and then they would just smoke a pipe for half an hour and see what happened. So yeah, I think you are right. It does come down to you, you know, using your body as well and your senses. Yeah, I mean, I don't know because I've never, I've never been like on a ghost investigation and used this stuff really. You know, I, I, I got, I'm not talking from experience. It's just the only thing that made me reconsider those devices was I was watching. There's an episode of um, Dorset Ghost Investigators. I don't uh-huh. think they still do investigations, but they used to do really good videos. And they had one of those ones where it's like, you know, it kind of it's supposed to pick up something in the atmosphere, and then it like spits out a robotic word. Oh yeah, as it yeah, you know what they're called. You know those sort of things. Yes, yeah. I think you can get apps to do them now. And there was one where, and I, I was watching their videos, and they were using these things. And I thought they're they're just spitting out random words. What you know, 
But they did a, they did a thing. They pointed the camera at it, and they said, "Can you can you complete this? One, two, three, four. And the thing spat out five. And they showed the screen as it did it, and it was like this thing just spits out random words all over the place. Yeah. How could it like complete? And it did it right in time for the, with them saying it. They counted to four, and then the next word it spat out was five. So that is interesting. Really yeah. That, that, yeah. Things like that are interesting. When you use a device in a in a in a kind of way like that, and you get a response, mm-hmm. so you you do. Um, but I see one of the things that I, you know, not to waffle on too much uh, about this, but one of the things that I find um, infuriating, you know, is when you go on an investigation and you've got these devices mm. and you think, right, well, okay, if that were me, I would put that there or I'd do this. And everyone, everyone's got their own style of doing investigations and, and you know, what equipment they use. But I always think to myself, one of the important things is if you go somewhere is to try, maybe try and get a, a time, a date, your name, get something to say your name. You know, and then you know you you know you're onto something, but just random words, and then you put those words into a context of, oh well, that's got to be something to do with the building, or that has to be you know part. You kind of you're kind of creating a a story to fit in with what you want it to be. I'm not saying that 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 happens all the time, but it's just one of those things that y- you can mislead yourself. And I do think there are you know TV shows out there that, like you said, that are put together with that pretense of doesn't matter what you get we're going to stitch it away stitch it together in a way that it that makes it look like something is being presented that might not be presented in a way which you see it to be yeah. you know yeah I, mean, I i much prefer the uh independent youtubers that um what's that channel called dead air i think you put me on to him mm. has he been on has yeah he yeah a few times yeah a few times very i mean like he's, he's got he's got quite a lot of gadgets but he presents he 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 you can tell he's genuinely like trying to catch you something mm. and he's not just doing something for entertainment mm. he's he's like really serious and he you know he goes out of his way to try and you know, I, I watched his stuff quite a lot now and he's, he's captured some really interesting things the I, I remember speaking to him about um when he went to the alistair crowley is played yeah that was um, awesome. and he went there and he had um he said he, when he went there, he didn't expect anything to happen. When he went there, it was still semi derelict because there would have been a, a very bad fire and it was some of the roof was gone, but part of the building was still what I would call reasonably intact. And mm. he went there in, he did a part daytime, part nighttime investigation. And he, he said that the daytime was okay, but when it got to nighttime and he was in the building, he felt um very very uneasy like he wasn't alone in the building just rob he's done loads of um uh, investigations all over the place all over europe everywhere and he, and he said that when he was there that he had a basically a feeling of terror he had to get out he felt unwell he felt dizzy mm. and and he had also had a problem with his um he carries a drone with him for doing like reconnaissance and filming and nothing worked properly in that area nothing worked properly so yeah. put that down to coincidence or or whatever, but he very rarely, um, how can I put it? He very rarely sort of, he, you know, he he won't say something happened if it didn't happen. Put it that way. And yeah, he's yeah. he's more likely to say, oh, it's likely to be you know, weather or a, an angry cat that made a meow or whatever, you know, that sort of thing. It's more, he's more logical when he comes to ghost hunting and investigations and stuff so he's yeah he's gone to some very interesting places and he's a very he's a very logical investigator and he does look at things from a very sort of logical mindset he doesn't just go just trying to go oh i heard this so it must be the soldier that came back and told me to get here yeah. so he's he's very he is very good and his his stuff is very well made as well um but yeah, he has nice. been on he's been on um He's been on the podcast a couple of times, I think. He's he's due to come back on before Christmas for a, for a catch up because he has gone to a couple of places um, over the last few months, and I expect those episodes will be popping up at some point. But um, I'm waiting for them to come up so that we can get him back on and and have a, and have a chat about what he experienced and stuff. 
because I, I like to watch his episodes and then get him on and, and ask him because you, you know you only see what you see from an edited version and it's nice to hear anything that went on in the background and I think some of the listeners might enjoy that as well what I was going to say with Halloween because this is the Halloween episode mm. um, films and stuff I remember as a a teenager growing up in the nineteen uh, eighties, because I have to get that in there. Did you ha- did you used to have like watch parties with you when you was a when you was a young boy? Did you have like watch parties? Nah, not really. I wasn't I wasn't allowed to watch horror films as a kid. Really? Yeah. I I, I had a group of friends who lived quite far away from where I lived, like you know, a few streets away. When you're a kid, that's far away, and they used to go around to one particular kid's house and his mum didn't care about what they watched and they'd watch all sorts of stuff and then I'd hear about these movies like my friend would like describe in detail everything I remember him describing like uh, child's play and stuff like that in in great detail so I had all these images in my head of these horror films but I was like never allowed to watch them and I didn't live close enough to be able to like sneak around to this kid's house and watch horror films at his place so yeah, I didn't really have that experience, sadly. Back then, the video store was king. Uh, every Friday and Saturday night, the video shops, when there was loads of independent ones as well, uh, would be basically full of teenagers, uh, you know, wanting there to get their latest film or, or whatever. And I remember uh, over most Halloween, we would have friends or I was quite fortunate because my parents had a video player. Um, they would either come around my house or we'd go around their house. And there'd be a large group of us and we would go to the local um, video store and we'd get a film and we'd, we'd obviously come back and watch it, you know, as a group. And we'd have our, like, you know, we'd have our Pepsi and our, you know, or our, or our sort of Tango or our, you know, Quattro or, or our Lil or whatever it might have been. And um, we'd be all like, you know, watching the film and stuff but the thing was you don't really think about it like you don't really pay any attention to it now but back then watching a what you call a um, a, a slasher film like halloween or the film halloween or friday the 13th or i spit on your grave or though any of those or zombie films or whatever um all classics now of course they're all classics um and a lot of them were banned and, and they were you know it, some of them got banned and it took years for them to be you know unbanned uh, and 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 into in in some of the retrospect, those films back then are very tame in comparison to what you get now. But the thing was, we were watching. We were sort of you know sixteen, maybe seventeen, coming up to either just leaving school, you know, at the point of end our last year of school or just left school. And we did this for a few years. I and mean, people drift apart, don't you? And you need to go off and do stuff and go to university and college and. You, you know, and your friend, your friendship circle changes or it evolves into other people. But the, you don't think, like, we're watching a film that's like, it comes up with a big 18 on the screen. None of us are 18. And you, your mum doesn't, she doesn't know, you know, she doesn't know. She doesn't really watch the videos. She's, she's mm. you know, she's reading her woman's own in the kitchen with her, with her mate drinking a, you know, having a, a sherry or whatever. So it's, um, but watching those films, um, I, I, there's one film that really scared me from watching all those films. A lot of them we just yeah. laughed at and thought we were funny. But I remember watching with my mates, we watched The Evil Dead. And mm. I don't know what it was about that film, but going home, I was around my mate's house then, and he was, about, well, I lived about four miles away. So the only way that I could get home was to do one or two things. I could get the bus, or if the, back then the buses would stop running at like 11 o'clock. Uh, I know I'd have to walk home, and I gotta say that I, because obviously I was watching this film and it was gone eleven o'clock, and I said to my mum, "Yeah, I'll be home. It's all right, I'll be home. I'll be home before." No, I wasn't. It was like I'd left there about twenty to twelve. You know, it was nearly midnight, and I remember that I'm suddenly come out of the house thinking, "Oh no, the buses, the buses don't run, do they?" And I had <laughs> like I had like thirty pence in my pocket because I'd spend it all on like you know, cola cola bars and whatever you know and panda pop i'd spend it all and i had to walk home four miles home at the um in you know early hours of the morning with with the evil dead in my head in my head 
the evil dead and the <laughs> and the zombies in my head and everyone every person that was coming near me i was thinking yeah they could be the one and i pretty much ran the last mile home uh but it was like it, that film i don't know it just burned into my head as a and i didn't really watch a lot of horror uh since you know since that time as a as a kid i didn't really yeah. watch a lot of horror films <laughs> but i mean some people love it i mean you know but what what do you think the difference is between like horror then and, and horror now I I don't know. I mean, like, horror goes through different sort of phases, isn't it, in different decades. I know I know there was a phase where it was all like, you know, when Scream came out, yeah. and that was like the horror resurgence, and then there was a load of like, there was a load of those kind of movies that came out in a short space of time, like, um, I Know What You Did Last Summer and yeah. all that. And then uh, it went away for a bit. And then it, so it seemed to come back with all those like conjuring movies. And mm. We went into much more of a, like a supernatural type of bent. Very uh, re- kind of the the conjuring films always reminded me of um, a resurgence of the the classic ghost um, accounts from you know from like the seventies and stuff. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, they were like they were a lot of them were like inspired by that, wasn't mm. it? The uh, the Warrens, a lot, yeah. I think all the conjuring films are like based on. Something from the Warrens back catalogue. I, um, I I don't know what it is about modern horror films. I I just think some of them are. Um, I don't know. Like, I've watched a few, you know, on the Netflix and that, and I mm-hmm. I tend to watch them, and I think, oh no, I can't watch anymore. It's just too, it, it's too real. It's like it, it seems to be they. It's more psychological than anything. It's like it gets in your brain. You know, it's not like someone running around with a knife going, oh, we're at the camp and there's a man, eh, I'm dead. Well, it depends what which ones you watch, I suppose. Mm. I, I, I kind of, I went off watching horror films, like recent ones, because a lot of them seem to be, they rely too much on, like, CGI effects, mm. for one. And they always had, like, the same sort of jump scares in them. I, I got a bit sick of them. They all, they all kind of felt a bit sort of bland and stuff. I haven't watched a lot of the new ones, like the ones that are on Netflix. Uh, I w- I'll tell you a good one I watched recently was um, Long Longlegs. I went to see that at the cinema. I've heard I've heard of that. I haven't seen it. Cage. Yeah. That, that, that's good. And that, that is like, that is really psychological. That, yeah. that is one that I thought was genuinely quite creepy. Well, uh, moving on just a little bit, just a tiny little bit from from horror and uh, slasher films. Did you know that Halloween is a time to dress your pet up as a, you know, as like Dracula or Frankenstein? Or if you've got like a little, got like a little dog and you can make him a costume or yeah. you've got a cat, you can put him in like a costume and make him into like the Wolfman or something. Or you've got a little hamster, something like that. Any pet really. You can put a costume mm-hmm. on them. That's a thing. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I, I've seen I've seen those things. Yeah, dog costumes. Yeah, so I've, I've never done it. Uh, you've got a dog. Yeah. What costume would you put your dog she, in? She would not. She would not wear a costume. I guarantee it. All right. But, but it, like what? Well, like a. Uh, it's not negotiable. You you got to okay, put your dog okay. in a costume. Well, she's on the she's, um She's Romanian, so I guess it would have to be some kind of Dracula outfit, wouldn't it? So your dog would be a Dracula? Yeah, I think so. She's got these weird, like... She looks a bit like a sheepdog, but she's got these weird, like, um, hairs... Like, two hairs on either side of a muzzle that sort of hang down longer, so they kind of look like fangs. I imagine if I sort of stained them white somehow and then put, like, a, a cloak on her or something... Some bat wings, maybe. Yeah, that would be quite quite cool. And then you could go... Uh, did you ever used to go, like, trick-or-treating? Did you ever do any of that? I, I wasn't allowed. I, was, I, I wasn't allowed to do nothing for none. You were Halloween. forbidden. You were forbidden. To... No, I wasn't allowed to watch horror films. I wasn't allowed to go hal- trick-or-treating. <laughs> so, yeah. I used to, with my mates. When, yeah. when I was young, young, I did. Mm. Um, when I was older... Differences is different levels of trick or treating. When you were a little kid, you would go. I remember going with my mum, uh, my brother, and we'd add these bags, 
and we would go around all the neighbors' houses, knocking on the door, basically, um, just being beggars and begging for food and begging for sweets. Because that's what you're doing, yeah. really, isn't it? You just, you just beg. I mean, right. When I was younger, right, I used to, I used to make costumes, and the, my mum would give us stuff like old bits of paper and uh, like cloth. I was going to say rags then, but that makes me sound like a vagabond. But it's a cloth um, and things that we could use to make costumes. And me and my brother used to make like these costumes. And they were like, you know, it, it was the best we could do with what we had. Most of the time I was a zombie because that was, it's just rags. You just pin it onto your normal clothes, basically. It's easy. Put some, uh, you know, put some of your mum's lipstick on your face. Like, ooh, and then you go, you got, you're a zombie. But anyway, um, we used to do stuff like that. And we had a bag, right? And we, my mum would take us around all these. I'm I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure this was all pre-planned. I, I think my mum had got together with all the other mums and said, listen, this is what we're going to do. At this time, our kids are going to be at this, uh, this house. At this time, the kids are going to be at that house. And so we never met any of the other kids. We were in this kind of like carousel of, of uh of sweet collecting you know for like an hour mm-hmm. and it was always in like our road you know it was it was never further away it was always in our road so anyway we would go out knock on doors and we go ah trick or treat and then they go oh, here's some sweets you know, go away and then of course the other kids would come and go ah, and it would be like that for like an hour and then we'd all go home eat our sweets and be really ill and then we could all go i got tummy ache i can't go to school but anyway so when you got older right um we we, we this is really weird now me talking about this but i'm a teenager right and i'd be at school like i don't know 14 15 and you'd go out to your boy oh, gary all right you go trick-or-treating tonight it's like you're 14 you know <laughs> you go with what you go trick-or-treating you're 14 mate you should be down the youth club talking to the girls uh let's go trick-or-treating you know get some uh get some sweets and stuff it's like you're 14 but anyway so we or i'll be there i call you seven so but we would you know we would dress up but it was the most it was the most low low key low fi uh dress up that you could you know you, my, my mate turned up a bin bag over the head yeah, well my mate turned up once and, we're, and he's like in his like normal coat right <laughs> he's like in his normal coat and he's got his jeans on and he's and he's and he's like nike trainers and uh, we're going, well, why haven't you dressed up? Well, I have. Well, why haven't you, what, what you wear? Well, look. And he just had like black rings around his eyes. And he's like, I'm a zombie. And I'm like, <laughs> you, you just put makeup on your eyes. Like you got two black eyes. But that was his makeup. We had, we were a little bit more. I put some gel in my hair. We could get this gel back in the day. It was like, it was like 25 pence, right? And anybody in, in uh, that grew up in the 80s will know the gel I'm on about. And I bet they're laughing their asses off right now because you could get it in like yellow, green, blue, and you had like um, uh, it was basically all of it was like cement. It was just like putting you might as well just put cement in your hair because it was like yeah, I remember yeah, stuff. you just you and it was like wet. You could get like that look at gel and exactly. make your hair look like it was just sl- sl- yeah, with sweat all the time. And, yeah, that's right. It looked like you'd just been r- running from the police for like an hour. <laughs> but but the thing is right. We would all like, I put all this gel in my hair, right? And I had all this, I had a, like quite short hair when I was younger. And uh, I put this gel in my hair and it was all like really spiky. And um, I remember my mate coming up, right? And he went, oi, oi, cookie. And he, the back of my head, right? He rushed the back of my head. Don't touch my hair. And uh, he rushed the back of my head. And of course, once you, once you break the uh, gel seal on your hair, it goes all puffy and fluffy. So I had all this like really kind of gelled hair at the front and big puffy bear at the back. So yeah, he ruined my he ruined my look for that evening. But no, I I I kind of put a bit of makeup on and uh, did a few like like uh, ga- I put a uh, like um those those do you remember those cheapo Dracula teeth that you could, you could get in the joke shop? Yeah. They were like, usually next to the fart powder and the itching powder. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I I had a pair of those and I put them in and we were we were we were like fourteen years old knocking on people's doors going trickle trickle tea. And uh, people, most people go, it's all, oh, yeah, you little kids, what's wrong with you? Go to the youth club, what's wrong with you? So, uh, yeah, we would, um, we'd knock on people's doors 
and we and most people they wouldn't answer because they would their sweets were safe for the little the little kids. You know the little yeah. the little kids come around the little four year olds or whatever knocking on the door. Yeah, and you'd be scared of getting egged or something. What? Well, yeah, a bunch of teenagers are probably. My mate like, did have. Yeah, he, uh, <clears throat> he 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 turned up right, and he said, and one bloke ch- one bloke chased us. We were, well, I wasn't, but a couple of my mates were in his garden, right, and they were knocking on his window, tapping on his window, and pushing their faces up against. It. And he came out with like a, I don't know whether it was like a shovel or a. <laughs> baseball bat or something and we just we cacked it and ran we jumped over the edge and, and my mate right we ran down the end of the road and he shouted all right and, and my mate's like you know you know when you're a young kid right you're a teenager you're all like tough and sh- you know you're all like, uh, hmm. but then they come out and you run away and you run away right and then they, the guy go back inside and then you're like oh he's lucky he was lucky he was lucky and then my mate's like that and he's like i got eggs on me let's take him let's take his car and we're like, are you mental? He just chased us with a with a baseball bat. He's going to batter us if he gets us. And he's like, oh, you can't do that. But no, we, um, so yeah, we went off down the, uh, we ended up at a youth club. We actually took someone's advice and went to the youth club. And this guy, he sat there all night, like really angry with like six eggs in his pocket. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I don't know where he got, I must have nicked him out of the fridge or whatever. But his mum, right? Was uh, what do you want for uh, uh, the, the dad? What do you want? Oh, I'll have egg and chips, love. He went to the fridge. Oh, car didn't use all his eggs, did I? Where have they gone? No, he's nicked them. He's in his pocket. <laughs> no, I um. Your, your, your Halloween <laughs> sound way more sociable than mine. Um, yeah, but they didn't. It wasn't. It they didn't last. I mean, it was a few years we did that when we were when we was when we was teenagers. We did it for a few years, and and of course, when you get a bit older, and it's like you know, you you realise that oh, I'm a bit old for this now. I'm a bit old for uh, uh, knocking on people's doors. When you when people look, you know, what, what, you know, don't give you nothing. Um, but it and also it got to a point where it was like it wasn't cool anymore. You know, you weren't cool if you were trick or treating. Uh, it was for little yeah. kids. But yeah, they were fun, and you know, it was fun to do uh, to do and and just have a have a bit of a laugh. But when you're when you're a teenager, it sounds good. It was all right. I mean, you know. It good memories. I, t- I tell you what. I tell you what. My Halloween's. Were yeah, like. please do. My, my 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 parents were like so scared of opening the door and getting egged or something. We'd have to sit in the, like because our house we had we had our front room was like at the back of the house. We'd have to sit in there with the TV dit turned down quiet, <laughs> and all all the lights on the front of the house had to be out, and we couldn't go out there to like you know get something from the bedroom. We just had to sit all night <laughs> until the trick or treaters had stopped. No, don't go out there. Can't let them know we're here. <laughs> that's a bit like you can't answer. That's a bit like when all, the rent man comes round. You haven't got the rent. It's yeah, it was like that. Sofa. And then uh, it got a bit better when uh, I finally got a TV in my room. I got this little black and white TV thing in my room, and then that was the first time I really started watching horror films, was because they'd show them at Halloween, yeah. and I'd sneak into my room and stay up with the uh, with the TV on quiet in my room, watching. Like I remember, like it would be on. And I'd I'd be sat there, I'd be, I bet I would have been quite young, and because uh, I'd not had any experience of horror films up till that point, I remember sitting there with like watching it, but like with my hand on the on the dial just to switch over quickly. So I had this like knob that yeah. turned to change the channels. As soon as there's something scary, I'd oh, <laughs> switch to something else. <laughs> and that, that was my experience. <laughs> you uh, you might have seen about TVs a minute. I. I had, I had a telly in my bedroom. I had a black and white telly. It was a, it was my mum and dad's old telly because um, back in uh, the late seventies, they went uh, they when color TV came well became a thing. Um, they got a color TV. Well, they went to uh, I think it was uh, is another is another blast from the past. They went to Radio Rentals and rented a TV, a color, a twenty six inch uh, color TV, and uh, that, of course. I, I was asking my mum, oh mum, can I have uh, can I have the old TV? It was only a, like a 21 inch black and white mono TV. And uh, and my dad was like, no, he's not having a bleeding TV in his room. He'd be up all night watching watching t- watching all sorts of things. But most TV back then ended at midnight anyway. It went off. You know, it got to midnight, they played the national anthem and then it was just fuzz. It was nothing. So it, after a while, I, I got to have a TV in my room. I got to have it. But under certain, it was quite strict. I could I could watch it, 
but it had to go off at like, I think it was like half nine or 10 o'clock and my mum would check in on me, you know, and before they went to bed, she would like, look, look, just look, look in, make sure I'm not watching it. But I, I had a, I had a, I had a plan, right? So what I did was, right, I had this radio and, um, the radio had two small speakers in it, right? And this is going to sound something like MacGyver, right? But this is why, this is, this is eight, this is late seventies, like kid thinking. I had these two little speakers, right? So what I did is I got the long speaker wire. Now it's obviously it's a mono telly. So I, I basically took the back off the telly, found the speaker connected with some sellotape, the wire to the speaker, right? Right. put the back back on then i put the wire all the way around the corner of my bedroom back up to the back of my bed and then i doubled the wire up right so that i could connect two speakers either side of my pillow in my pillow right <laughs> in my pillow right and then i would set the volume on the, on on the telly right it's all mo it's there's no remote control it's all like done manually so i have to preset the volume so that it's a, it's a, when my head's on the pillow, I can hear the sound, but it's not loud enough. There's audible, you know, where somebody's in the room that, you know, they mm -hmm. can't hear it. But, I, you know, I had a secret weapon next to my bed I had a long stick, a long piece of like, I don't know, like bamboo cane, which is basically, it was an old, um, it was an old bit of cane from a, a window where we had where we had uh, the curtains, but my my mum had it changed to a proper thing. So I I kept it. I thought, oh, I'll keep that, ma. And she said, what do you want that for? I'm going to make a fishing rod out of it. But I knew what I wanted it for. So when my mum, I heard my mum coming up the stairs when I was watching, uh, I don't know, some late night streets of San Francisco or whatever, or Starsky and Urch, all I did was get the bamboo cane and then over, over to the telly, which is on the other side of the room, and then click the button off and the telly went off <laughs> and then I pretend to be asleep and then my mum would look in and go uh, no no Ray's I go no no and then she went go off and I go click and it come back on a bit of Huggy Bear or whatever a bit of Starsky Nutch a bit of uh, whatever it was I was watching a bit of Sweeney <laughs> so yeah you know what brilliant I bet, I bet your mum knew your I bet she did I bet she, I bet she was asleep yeah. he's gone to so much effort yeah. with that stick and his speaker setup <laughs> oh it's brilliant it was just... brilliant i i i just um i i don't know it just i had this um i don't know i just wanted i want i wanted to uh i wanted to see all the films like like i wanted to watch like the professionals i wanted to watch the sweeney people would go i would go to school the next day and they go did you watch the, the sweeney last night and i'm like no i'm not allowed to watch that oh what are you parents know what you sweet i watch sweet watch professionals no i can't watch that it's too violent but it's like, yeah. you know, it's like um, you little kids, you know. Like I'm, I was like eight, nine years old, and and some of my mates have uh, they got tellies in their room and they're watching all that stuff. I'm not, I got a telly, and I'm not allowed to watch it. Well, I am now because I got a secret weapon. But yeah, <laughs> but um, that was that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. What well, you say now about going into school? One of my biggest things like that is going into school and everyone talking about Ghost Watch or. Brilliant. I don't know if we've we we spoken about this on this brilliant one of yeah. podcast before, but I remember everyone talking about that, and I just had no idea. It wasn't until absolutely years later that I got to watch. Did you show. believe I, it was completely real? I did. I was completely taken by. I, I hadn't. I hadn't seen oh. it. But like, I remember. I remember that all the kids were freaking out about this thing that they'd seen the night before. Oh my god! Did you see that? With the and I remember the teacher having to like stand the kids like you know stand in front of the kids a bit like right, everyone calm down give everyone a little bit real. of a background into what it was and what what it was so anyone listening that doesn't know what we're on about okay well it was um but it was a bbc show and it was like the one off wasn't it it's basically like it was like yeah and it was like a precursor to most haunted and stuff like that if you just a classic like ghost hunting show like most haunted I think probably took inspiration from this. It was set up like like it was real. Like they'd put these hidden they put these cameras around a, a, a suburban house that was supposedly haunted, and they had um, Craig Charles and uh, I can't remember the uh, Sarah name. Green. Yeah, Sarah Green as the presenters, and, um, and they were playing the themselves. Not was it not Michael Aspel? Um, 
uh, the other guy, oh, what was his name? He was like the beta presenter, wasn't he? Um, trying to think of his name. Was it, was it, no, was it Michael? No, it was Vince. No, it was on that same same sort of level. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really bad with uh, presenters' names. Anyway, yeah, he he was back at the studio, like getting the experts in to talk about ghosts but it was it, it, Craig Charles and Sarah Green were like on the ground and they were then everyone was playing themselves in this thing you know they were they were playing like this is this is the first time we've done like a live ghost hunt or whatever and they go into a house and it's just your typical things like you'd have like I don't know, you, nothing really would be happening. Like a normal ghost hunt. There wouldn't be much happening. They'd be sort of walking around the house and now and then you'd hear like a knock or something like that. And then things just ramped up over the course of this episode. And until by the end of it, people were getting possessed. And there was all these like people were getting attacked by this ghost and it ended up like coming through the TV screen and attacking the, the studio where they were recording things and people were getting possessed there and it's genuinely quite a terrifying well, show. It w- even to the, even if you watch it, it today, was Michael it's Parkinson. Parkinson. Michael Parkinson, that's it. Yeah, it was yeah. the main geezer that was presented. Here's the thing, right? With with Ghost Watch, um, because it was done like a like a live investigation. the 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 whole pretense was that there was a there was a spirit in the house, and it was an angry uh, guy from years ago who had come back, and he was causing uh, all the mayhem. Uh, like a you know like a pop pipe yeah pipes that's it well the thing was right there's things that w- when i watch that now and if anybody wants to watch it just go to youtube and type in um uk tv show ghost watch um and it's on there you can watch it because it was banned uh, they did ban it for a while over here yeah but um we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute the reasons behind that but the thing was right um if you look in the episode now i don't remember the only thing, the only scary thing that I remember seeing was when the girls were in bed and the guy, allegedly the, the spirit of the guy was in the bedroom by the curtains. You could see his outline. And, yeah. but there were also a number of other times that he appeared in shots where you have to actually go back and look. There's a reflection of him in the mirror when someone gets smashed yeah. on the floor. And there's another reflection of him in the kitchen when he stood behind the camera crew. But it's such a, a quick pan that you don't your brain doesn't see him but when you do it on the frame by frame he stood there so they were very yeah. clever about stuff like that and people were ringing into the show going i've seen him i see him in the kitchen I and it was all very cleverly the placement was, was there for a reason but that show yeah had and they had like a, they had a thing where it was like they they were kind of pretending people were ringing in yeah on but it was all pre-recorded yeah. but they pretended it was live and they had a bit where they said, "Oh, we've had a phone call from someone saying they can see. They've they've saw him standing here at this particular yeah. time, and they played the footage forward, and he stood there. You can see like a big outline. That's right. And they were like, right, let's rewind it. That's right. And they play it back, and he's he's not there. So it makes you think you like imagine yes, right. it. Yeah, it's really really clever. But it did generate a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, um, letters to the BBC about after it had gone. In, people were actually saying that when they were watching the um, watching the show." that they were having things happening in their home. Somebody yeah. said that their, their their watch had stopped and it would, wouldn't work anymore. Other people were saying that they'd had poltergeist activity. And and you think to yourself, that the, the power of that, the power, is it the power of suggestion where it, are you you know, are you making people believe that something's happening? But one of the biggest controversies was a young lad uh took his life. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. I mean, I made a video yeah. about it. Yeah, he uh, hung him so he, he he it was a witch tree where he took his life, but it was. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to go into no, too much we, detail in case it's a bit. Uh, well, we we gotta be careful. But, yeah, we gotta be careful with yeah. algorithms now. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. He he um, as people know, he did he did a deed, and um, it was there was a massive controversy about it that uh, that shows like this, and 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 if you think about it, any program uh, like that, the ma- the amount of power that he can put across, you know, especially if that was new that was something that hadn't been done really apart from like remember yeah. like all the worlds when they did um the radio show had the same sort of effect but on a much bigger scale yeah. 
And you, yeah. you, I mean, they, they, these days, uh, that kind of fake documentary, fake investigation, it, there's so many of them, it's it's kind of a bit old heart, but... That back then, yeah, I'm, I believed, for a while, after seeing it, um, I, I believed that it, it was completely... Even if you watch back now, it's, it's some of it's completely silly, especially at the end when all the wind starts in the studio and things are blowing around and, and cameras yeah. are flying around. You're thinking, oh, my God, what am I watching here? But it's uh, <laughs> but back then you're like, wow, oh, could you do a You know, and it's, uh, I'm, I remember going to school and all everyone was talking about it. Everyone was talking about it. You see, you know, it was real. Yeah, it was real. And and you're you're a little kid and you're so conflicted as is was it real was it make believe and of course as the time goes on you read things and you see things and and you think ah oh, okay it was all it was all just made up it was all pretend but but then you get that urban kind of well it's like that urban legend sort of thing well maybe it wasn't maybe it, you know but um, yeah I don't know that was a classic that that was a classic um, I don't know it just it was classic it was just I mean. We don't really get that on. I mean, England and the UK, we've kind of got this Halloween thing. We haven't like fully embraced it. Uh, in in America, it's a, it's a thing. You know, it, everyone does it. Well, not everyone, but it's like it, it's like a thing over there. Over here, it's like you know, it's for little kids. It's not all little kids. I mean, how many put it this way? At Halloween, how many how many kids knock on your door and ask for like um, a Kit Kat or whatever? God, well. I've just moved out, so you don't know. So I don't know. I don't know about my current. I, I've got a feeling we're going to get more trick or treaters around here. But I used to get like sometimes you'd get like one or two, if that. One one Halloween, I remember we had about ten, and that seemed quite busy. But, um, yeah, it's it's re- it's not really it's not really a massive thing. Well, I don't really I don't really get any red here. But maybe because I live on a massive mm-hmm. hill. It's like the side of Mount Everest, this hill. So yeah. people don't want to walk up here. It's uh, they'd rather stick down to the flat bits. Uh, but I don't. I don't really. In my other place, I used to get like the odd. What I used to do actually, I <laughs> know it's really lazy. What I used to do was um, I buy like a load of like the like penny sweets, uh, put them mm-hmm. in like a little bucket and leave them by the door. <laughs> Like a dog bomb. Yeah. I go, no, just take some. I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to be your mate. Just have a, have a, have a, you know, have a chew it or whatever and then go away. You know? Well, do, do you, do you put like, do you put things outside the house to sort of let them know that? Because there, there's some houses that don't put any decorations up and I assume they're the ones that don't get trick or treaters knocking on the door. We always, I always put a pumpkin out or something. I've got, I've only like, got, I've only got like uh, one sign that's like, Beware of the dog it bites. <laughs> is that a permanent sign? Or is it just a Halloween one? I uh, no, I usually uh, answer the door wearing like a, a um, an apron covered in blood, uh, holding a carving knife, going, "Come on in, <laughs> come on in." Yeah, but what about Halloween? Uh, yeah, that's uh, no, that's, I don't do it for Halloween. <laughs> Only in no, no. Way. <laughs> no, I um, yeah, but go on. If you if you don't have anything outside yeah. your house, then you know it, you won't get many. No. But... I don't have anything because they'll yeah. just get. Naked. I mean, I was, I was, I was going to Halloween hopeful. Like, I buy a big bucket of sweets, and I put the pump, I carve a pumpkin, I put it out, I put some decorations up, because I just really like Halloween. It's probably like my favorite holiday. But have you decorated? And I was, yet? I was hoping it... as a decorator. Uh, no, not oh. yet. No, I, I, I usually just do it on Halloween. I don't like having a lot of the things outside the house before that. But um, yeah, I think I'll. Well, I have no. I like do um, I mean. I have noticed more people buying um, buying pumpkins and stuff, but I think that's making yeah. kids to sort of chop up um, yeah. Halloween to make, you know, put candles in and stuff like that and uh, put them, but like you say, put them outside the front door or whatever. I think that... that yeah, I've noticed more. Yeah, I think... I've noticed that a lot of, uh, like, supermarkets are selling more sort of what I call Halloween tat, where it was, like, red yeah. dress-up stuff and that. I mean, gone are the days where you would mum would give you rags and say, "Look, there's a pile of rags there. Make something from that. Use your brain." Yeah. Now you just go into a supermarket and buy something that was made in, I don't know, China for like two pence, and you wear it. Yeah, and 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 they and they have the uh, they have the pumpkin farms now. That seems to be quite a new phenomenon. Do you know about that? No, what what's that? Basically, a a farmer will get a bit of empty field. Okay. 
you'll go down to Tesco and he'll buy a ton of pumpkins. You'll rub a bit of dirt on them and he'll just put them into a field. And it'll, it and it's like, and then like, parents will pay like 10 quid or whatever to go down there with their kids. Oh, well, let's go down to the pumpkin patch. We can pick out our own pumpkin. They're just, they're just supermarket pumpkins just lying there in a the field. It's not like they go in there to pick, <laughs> pick a pumpkin. And this is, this is a thing. That's amazing. Like, that's amazing. There's, there's quite a few. I've seen a few around here. There's just it's just a dirty field with a load of pumpkins just, just lying like, there in the in the mud. Just get some cow poo, spread them over the pumpkin, and uh, yeah. and let people in and say, um, yeah. for a pumpkin you could buy in uh, the local supermarket for like a quid fifty. You go to a farm and uh, buy it for like four pound. Yeah, that's that's exactly. I think it must be like some American thing that's come over here, but. That's amazing. It's, it's a thing. That's like so. that's just amazing. But then again, but then again, um, I think if you think about it from a little, you got to be a little kid. Put yourself into like a little kid perspective. Mm. If you're going somewhere into a field, maybe maybe a dark wooded area with maybe some you know very vicious vampire dogs or something, allegedly. Um, as a kid, that might be a bit of an experience that you had to go and, uh, you know, you went on a quest, a pumpkin quest to get your pumpkin. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot of fun. For a little kid, it's like, you know, I mean, you could actually hire some, like, I don't know, there's, I mean, I don't want to sound controversial, but I'm just saying what there is. There are, like, uh, like uh, agencies out there that are, like, like specialised in, like, dwarf agencies, and you could dress them up like goblins, have them in the field or in the woods little kid i mean it just adds <laughs> yeah well you could do i don't i don't think they do though i, I think it's just a field <laughs> i don't i don't think they like go all out and make it all spooky i would i, know, I could be right i've never been told let's let's do it mate next year this, we're gonna get, we're gonna put some money in a pot and yeah. we're gonna do it go to the agency hire some high quality you know theatrical actors who can who can act of restricted growth. Go down the uh, supermarket, buy all of the pumpkins, put them in a field, mm. and there you go. Rub some, rub some dirt on them, and uh, and there you go. We're, we're gonna be sitting free. Yeah, you, you could do something like um, you know, like a corn maze, or something scary, and then you have to try and get your pumpkin out of the maze. That's the way. Make it, it into a bit more of a experience. There you go. You you've just you just you uh -huh. just come up with the idea. You have the you have the pumpkin. You, you you can have the pumpkin for free. Uh, you, mm. you you pay an entrance fee, which really covers the cost of the pumpkin as well. So you don't. It's not free really. Uh, then you get the pumpkin. The little kid goes, "Mummy, I want that one." So it he gets that pumpkin, uh, and then the mum's got to carry it because you know he's, the kid can't handle the pumpkin size. Uh, but you have to go through the maze to get out. And yeah. in in the main it's like scarecrows, exactly. Stuff. There are things Chasing in there, around. exactly. Uh, there you go, and 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 that is uh, the horror aspect of it. So the, that way, the little kid will always remember that time that he went and picked his first pumpkin. It would be literally, oh, yeah, that'd be that'd be a bit embedded, burnt into his uh, into his brain. Uh, there you go. It's we've solved oh. the problem, and we've made we've made a way to make some easy coin. There you go. Brilliant. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, it's nearly as good as that. Uh, uh, the, the Charlie and is it Charlie and the Chocolate Factory experience? The oh, the Wonka experience in <laughs> Glasgow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. awful! Absolutely awful. I, I, I recently went to a like a horror maze thing. Yeah. And I was expecting it to be a bit like something you know, like a bit cheap and stuff, but it was actually amazing. It was like properly set up. It's called the Psycho Psychopath. And it's like it's one of the country's best horror maze. They got all these different things in, and there was like did anyone jump out at you? It was it was just constantly people oh, jumping out. Oh, Even when you oh. weren't in one of the mazes, there were just people walking around like dressed up as different, like a nun, a creepy nun. But then there was there was like you go into one, it's like a fun house, and it's like you're going around, and there's all these clowns jumping out, and then you you're in like a you're in a room that's just so full of, um, what's it called? That, um, dry, what's it called? Dry eyes? Yeah, 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 dry eyes. Yeah. It's just so full of that, you can't oh, see it's horrible your stuff. face. Yeah. And you just, 
you're just trying to get through it and it's like there's all these clowns in there it, it was it was really good my mate got my mate got dragged into a room on his own and they just like covered him with like some stinking i don't know what it was just covered his coat and everything in this stinking like slime put a bucket over his head and started hitting it <laughs> i think that's called assault isn't it <laughs> what you pay that's what you pay to you, you like i think you like you sign a disclaimer when you when you pay for your ticket really they can do anything yeah all right good it was good good experience that dry ice i remember one of our uh we did a gig years ago long time ago we played a mm. we played a venue where the guy just had a, a smoke <laughs> a smoke machine fed right and i i don't i think one of uh one of the uh you know one of the one of the trotter brothers or whatever must have feared it with all del boy must have feared it or whatever because uh, the, the the smoke machine was fitted, but the controls were all like ran the wrong way. So it, it was basically to turn it off was turn it on, and it was just all messed up. And we were we and it was all it it wasn't it, it was me, it was like you could remote control it, you know. But because it was all messed up, it was on like full blast, and we were playing. And this guy he was like really into his smoke machine. He had a lighting rig and everything. It was really good, uh, nice stage. But the smoke machine, he literally switched it on because he wanted the atmosphere, and it just it just went full bore onto the stage. It was just like the instant. It was like the fog rolling in from the film, the, you know, the mist, <laughs> yeah. and it was like that, and it just completely engulfed the stage. And we, I couldn't even see what I was doing. And that stuff gets <laughs> right into your throat, man. It gets right down the back uh, of your throat, and we all started coughing because it was like it's just a full blown. Uh, wafted of this stuff, this dry ice, and he couldn't. He was trying to switch it off, and he couldn't switch it off, and he was panicking, and he ended up like ripping the uh, the socket out of the back to to stop, you know, to stop it from working. He was panicking because it was filling his. Um, the venue was a massive, and all the people were like coughing and complaining because it was just filling the whole place up with this mist. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was uh, yeah. I don't like. Um, I'm not really fond of those things because it just makes you cough. Uh, it might it might not have been dry ice and it might have been something else, but it was like because it was a room full. It was so thick he couldn't see like an inch in front. Of you. Yeah, it was really claustrophobic actually. But anyway, Tom, I think we've come to the end of this episode because we could be talking for uh, you know ages. I want to thank everybody for sticking with us. If you have, if you haven't got like oh god, shut up and turned off. And we also um, both of us hope you have a nice Halloween and uh, go and do your trick or treating or whatever you're going to do. Um, but uh, do it safely and uh, be respectful. And, uh, you know, only take your, uh, you know, your uh, equal share of the sweeties. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and uh, from me and from Tom, thanks uh, for listening. And uh, until next time, talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.